Hey everybody, good morning. Um, jeez, oh, I forgot to change the damn thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I think like once a week, I just kind of um, yeah, get my day off on a on a wrong foot. Um, yeah, I've got like all my stuff messed up. I didn't sleep so well last night. I didn't change the. Oh, title of the stream before, so I'm going to have to go back and, like, change the title of the stream and, like, recording videos and stuff. So, anyway, um, yeah, what I'm trying to say is it's kind of a delicate system sometimes in terms of, uh, you know, going through the routine and setting things up and getting working. So, anyway, having a bit of an off morning, but um, uh, that's okay. Uh, but I do have some cool stuff to share, so... Um, Starting a bit later today. I'm starting a bit later because I was working on posting some blog posts. Um, so now it's month two, week two, second day of month, month, month two, week two. Um, yeah, so I've got both a month two, week one uh, summary post. Um, so you can uh, check that out to see how uh, month one progress was, or uh, that that week's project progress was, and then. I've also got a uh, like a like a project pitch going, so um, I think I want to start doing this from now on because um, yeah, I think I might have done a better job of like communicating what I was building with month one, but in month two I've simultaneously been trying to figure out like kind of what the product is and what it's called, and I haven't really settled on a name yet, so. Anyway, I thought in order to uh, just make it a little easier to like show people what I'm doing, what I'm working on, um, if I had like a ready-made link to send out with um, you know a summary of the thing and you know the scope of what we're actually building, then um, yeah, I'll probably make it easier to um, uh, kind of make things public and you know get people on board with like you know what's going on and what the work's going to be. So. Um, anyway, if you'd like to check that out, that's startupinmonth.net, and, um, yeah, you can just go straight here to see the posts. Man, I've kind of written a lot, haven't I? It's cool. It's cool to watch something build up over time, honestly. Um, that's something I've tried to, tried to gain a greater appreciation of as I get older, is, um, oh, just kind of like watching something grow over time. Because, you know, when you're younger, it's kind of a process of, like, oh, going through and doing this, like, kind of slapdash thing where you're, you know, running around and trying a bunch of different stuff. Old, old sweat man. Old sweat man. Hello, Mr. Fry. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, yeah, I don't think I've seen you in the chat before. Welcome, welcome. Um... Yeah, anyway, I was just saying that, um, yeah, no, it's cool to see that uh, I've written a lot of blog posts and, you know, kind of see the body of work grow and um, watch this thing take shape before my very eyes. That's uh, it's kind of fun. You call me Mr. Fry, I wonder if, uh, no, I'm new. I said I post about your stream on our closure. Ah, cool. Well, yeah, welcome, man. Yeah, that might have been posted by my buddy, uh, do I have the link? Coffee encoding. Coding and coffee. You might have seen the post I just made this morning, but uh, yeah, this uh, gentleman who showed up in the stream a few times has uh, also been posting links around. So um, yeah, if you're into close your live streams, you should uh, check this guy out too. He uh, he does stuff in the afternoon Pacific time, so um, I'm on in the mornings and he's on in the afternoons. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed having him around. But anyway, let's see. Been actually following your startup saga? Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm uh, really glad to have you along for the ride, man. Glad to have you along for the ride, glad to have you in the chat. So, uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, morning, Teacher Tyler. Teach Tyler, not a Teacher Tyler. <laughs> Good to have you in, man. You've been uh, you've been in most of my streams for the past uh, past couple weeks now, so good to have you back too. Um, yeah, starting start a little bit late. I think I'm gonna skip the warm up this morning, but I am gonna jump back into building the product. So, building the pick story UI. All right, cool. So we got what we're doing updated. Now, how about we just start the start the server and get going, eh? Yep. 
because we don't necessarily need for that to start before we can start the front end, but the key combination, that thing is not a command. Hmm. I think some stuff has changed in Calva recently. Dev seed and dev. There's some key commands that got changed and then some uh, other stuff I think got changed too. So I'm gonna have to head back into their docs. All right, cool. All right. Well, I just picked a name for this thing last night. So before we get into things for real, I would like to, oh man. It's a, it's a functional mess, but it's a it's a little wacky after all the work last week. So yeah, how about we how about we change this thing? We got a name for it now. And how about we call it by that name? Uh, February Pick Story. Anyway, we'll see if the name sticks. Um, but I think it's a pretty good description of what we're trying to do here, right? Like we're trying to uh, get people an easy way to like upload photos, share them with friends, and turn them into like uh, kind of a story format. Um, but a more interesting story format than what you get with Google Photo Albums. So yeah, cool. There's power in the name, so it's kind of nice to have that up. And... All right, let's pause for a moment just to kind of orient ourselves with what we've done so far and what we want to do still. Okay, so yeah, it might not look like much so far, but basically what we've got is two layout templates. This is like a window pane layout template. This is a side-by-side -side layout template, and these are going to be used to layout photos. So. If you click on one of them, that will select them. If you click on this funny button that says hi, it'll add it to the page. So that's what we can do so far. So we can create a basic layout. Um, there's obviously stuff to do down here in terms of making these like visuals correct. And you know, it's a little wacky what we got with this like hi button. So that'll be something to change as well, but Another thing we have to do this morning is work on how all this stuff is laid out. So I've got an idea for like a button layer and a template layer. So these buttons are going to be used. Well, sometimes they're going to be active. Sometimes they're not going to be active or disabled, I should say. But essentially, when you add a layout template to the page, um, uh, that's just gonna add like an empty layout and you actually need to go through and like select pictures to add into that layout so this button layer is gonna have like various buttons you can use to add pictures to that particular part of the layout and that underneath that is where the actual pictures are gonna go so that kind of gets to that um, MVC idea model view controller um, so the controller layer I never really understood that acronym. I'm not sure if I'm using it correctly, but essentially the controller layer is going to be like our buttons. That's going to be the thing that actually um, influences like how we interact with the um, with the images that we're uploading. And then the template layer is going to be like where the divs with the images actually live. So I had an idea yesterday to use grid to lay this on top of that. Although I don't think I have the style right. Um, so I think the first thing I should do is figure that out. And yeah, that'll be a nice place to start. All right. So let's take a look at our CSS. Um, so we got a button layer with a Z index of one and a template layer with Z index of zero. And we can see that those properties did arrive, but I think the problem is that my uh, template grid is not, it's not right. So if I go in here and change, yeah. If I go in here and change this, does that do anything? No, I might need to change that in the actual 
See his head self. All right. Uh, display template columns, one fraction. Good template rows. Auto. Maybe. Eh, still one on top of the other. Uh, maybe I need to tell them to be in the same column in the same row. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Grid column. Grid row. All right. I think it should be one, two, one, two. I think probably the same for this as well. Ah, yep, there it is. All right, so now the button layer and the template layer occupy the same row, which means I can add more of these. And everything is just gonna be like one on top of the other, so that's great. So window pane, window pane, side by side, that's where the images go. Window pane, window pane, side by side, that's where the buttons are, excellent, okay. So, where to go from here? Um, man, it's always such a calming thing to actually get to work, you know? It's like when I'm out there in the world and I'm trying to like strategize and figure things out and, um, oh, geez, just make sense of this crazy life and figure out where I'm going and how I want to spend my time and what I need to do. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, you know, it's a messy, sticky thing to, uh, do that, but you know, when you're living in the domain of code, it's um, you know, things can also get very messy and sticky, but at least um, you can count on like some rules, you know, for how this stuff works. So, yeah, it's a very comforting thing in a way to, um, to have that. All right, uh, yeah, so we got these buttons and I think we need a way. The wrap was already on, wasn't it? Okay. I think we now need a way to actually add pictures. Yeah, at least code has some consistency. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is why we keep showing up. Template block collection. What was that? Oh, that was um, that was our two templates from before. That's how we add templates to the page. Uh, yeah, so I think I want to go into the button layer. I want to start adding click handlers to these buttons, and I want to figure out how to add a picture to the right spot. Okay. So last time I introduced the concept of a row index and a column index. So for now, I'm just gonna have this be like a flat thing. Um, you know, we could get into like sub templates where like, you know, we've got this top level template and you know, maybe in here you have like a sub template or something like that. I mean, that's totally possible to do from an HTML perspective, but from a code perspective, that seems pretty tricky for an MVP, a minimum viable product, because uh, that's getting into like all kinds of recursion. Um, which, you know, something that's hard even even in the best of times, and I don't really do too much of it, to be honest with you. So uh, I'm not going to touch that for now. Possibly upgrade to it later. So yeah, I've got a row index of zero, which means this row, and a column index of zero, which means the top left. So now I need to tie that to the actual template. The actual template itself. So, yeah. Well, while we're thinking about this, there's stuff we can do. So, we can like actually write those click handler functions under contents. Maybe we 
can give that some better style, right? Um, Make it a little more obvious what's going on here, what that thing does. It's not just a piece of random text floating in the screen. It's a button that does something. All right, so that's cool. I uh, really like to make those look better, but it's not super important for right now. Um, yeah, man. OK, it's so the side-by-side -side block. Um, that's going to be the easiest, so how about we just start with that. Start with the easy thing, build up to the hard thing. All right, so that has a row index. That has a column of 0 and 1. So if I was going to do something other than Print landing high, what would I do? I'd probably say, um, add picture. Now pass them the row index. Now pass them zero. Same thing for here. I pass them the row index. Now pass them one. All right. Next problem. Oh, I already. Started that function yesterday, didn't I? Oops. Okay. Cool. So now we have a function called add photo. It takes a row index and a call index. And what does it do? It's pushes. Old sweatman says, not trying to backseat, but did you know you can specify classes for hiccup HTML with dot notation? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I've been doing class in that object since I'm using something called um, uh, Tailwind CSS, which is um, uh, like a like a utility library, which is like built off of like these uh, teeny tiny little like utility functions. So if I was gonna do a button with like dot text center dot width with full dot bg yellow three hundred. Uh, that might get like kind of intense when you're talking like you know 15 or 20 class names. So I've been sticking with the class syntax for now, and I've been doing it even when like I'm not using any um, Tailwind utility classes. But um, yeah, that is something I'm generally aware of. And you know, if I ever ditch Tailwind or anything, I might I might go to that. But for now, I'm just sticking with class since um, that's that's a little bit easier to read and actually change. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, if you're not aware of uh, what Tailwind is, you should check it out. I'll put that in the chat. Yeah, this is like probably my favorite. Get down there. CSS utility library I've ever worked with. So, um, yeah, I can recommend it if you, uh, if you do front end work. It's really easy to um, quickly prototype something. Hey, you're welcome. Okay, cool. So now we've got this function. Add photo, row index and call index. And I think my best bet is if I stick with like, you know, maps and, and vectors and lists of strings and lists of data until the point that I have to like render something. Cause like what I could do is um, something like, uh, you know, resets, pictures, with um, the result of conjuring pictures with the new image that has, you know, a source of picture.com slash image. Uh, something like that. So it could be like saving um, like hiccup HTML into a vector and rendering straight from there, but I think my spidey sense is telling me that um, working with like uh, you know just normal like maps and stuff is gonna be is gonna be a better way to go. So we'll see we'll see how that turns out. Um, 
Adam images. Is this what I intended to use for the pictures? I think it is. All right. So we're going to swap this thing with what? Um, yeah. Man, another thing I uh, struggle with frequently, which I'm sure as programmers you can all relate to in some fashion or another, is uh, the idea that, like, you know, the second I do something, like, and I try to implement it in a simple way, I all of a sudden start seeing, like, all these very complicated, like, side paths I could potentially travel down. So, like, what I want to do is take this images atom, which is, like, just an empty vector for now, and I want to, like, conj new image onto it, and that image is going to have config information associated with it and, um, you know, all kinds of stuff that, like, ties it to a particular template. Um, in a, in a particular uh, part of that template. But then the question arises, like, okay, so that's an easy way to, like, add images, but what if there's an image already there and you want to change it or delete it or remove it? So kind of makes, like, programming really difficult sometimes because, you know, you want to, like, somehow account for all those things in your code before you actually encounter the problems. Um, thereby save yourself, you know, a little heartache and... Uh, you know, aggravation when it comes to, like, you know, adapting what you already wrote for some kind of new use case, but I think that premature optimization thing is going to be something that's good to avoid. And I think it's something that using closure I'm going to encounter less, although I have yet to really test out that theory um, to its fullest. But I think the style of code that this language encourages you to write makes future changes a lot easier. And much easier than they would have been if I had, like, you know, written this in JavaScript or something like that. So let's stick with, yeah, you know, keep the faith, stick with our guns here. And let's just, um, yeah, let's just conch for now. All we gotta do is conch. We can worry about making changes to existing, existing config objects later. All right. Yes, this needs three things to my mind. It needs an image URL, which is going to be that test image. It needs a row and it needs a call. And the row is going to be the row index. The call is going to be the call index. Great. So now I can add a photo. Swap the atom images with the result of conjing that onto them, right, okay. Um, yeah, and before we run, how about we just see if we can get an image, an image on the page. Okay, so we're not working with that. Layout block experiment, layout buttons, template grids, contents. Yeah, how about we put something in here? Into the div goes this stuff. Seek into map indexed. Gonna map over our Atom images. I'm going to do the following. Let's say an image tag, the source that corresponds to the source of the item. And that's all for now. Uh, redundant do. I think it's probably not redundant based on what I understand from the guy who showed me that technique. All right. 
So can I just click like any button? Oop. Okay. Do I get an error? I do. Expect an unclick listener to get a function instead get a value of object type. All right. So unclick, right. Go back here, refresh. Don't strictly need to refresh, but we will for good luck. What do we see? Nothing yet. Ooh. Maybe crashed our page. All right. Something to account for for later. Just make sure that this is a real picture. It is a real picture. All right. Great. Swap, add an images with the result of conjuring a new, ah, image URL, that's what I called it. Got the wrong. Wrong property I'm trying to get. Adding an image with a null source. Oh, hey, there we go. Ah, look at that. <laughs> My six cats I tried to uh, I tried to render earlier are still in state, and then uh, the card refreshed, and all of a sudden we could see them. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, we can we can put an image in there. Let's just make sure this works from like the beginning. Yep. Let's have a little fun. Let's add like dun 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 dun. Like fifty of those cats. <laughs> Great, so we can add an image. Um, now I need to do two things. Well, let's do let's do one thing first. We need to figure out how to add it to the right row and column. All right. Um, and now I think I do that from the layout block component. Window pane block, so this is for Adding a layout. Um, I've also got a function which just gives me the div, right? Side by side selector, window pane selector, under template grids. Right, function index and item. So this is where I'm rendering the actual templates that will contain my images. And let's just get a quick visual demonstration. This is where pictures will go. Let's just see what this index is. So where pictures will go, index is zero. window pane right do div class item so I'm getting the wrapper now I've got a choice to make am I going to render four divs a la this thing so like I've got this window pane thing, like exact same class, down here, same style, same layout, and inside I'm rendering four buttons, which correspond to the four areas of that grid. So do I just render the images like straight into this div, or do I render little divs inside, like four divs, which then contain, which then themselves contain the images themselves. So it's gonna be like div, and then like, image source. I still have this in my clipboard. Nope. Nope. Oops. 
source equals that. I need to close the image. Yeah, well, anyway, you get the idea. It'll be um, divs inside here with a particular image, and then you'll have like another image maybe. Like a second image over there, if Firefox would stop treating this like a string and treat it like HTML. So anyway, um, I think from a, just from a ease of, programming perspective, that's probably going to be the easiest thing, so, yeah, how about I do this, let's go back to that function, uh, it was, um, index is this, render template grids, Animal layout blocks. Center print line item. Just want to see what that is real quick. Window pane. All right. So instead of just rendering the straight HTML, I think I want something like this. This is just getting like really silly. So I think. Um, time to refactor is going to be upon us soon, but that's um, no pain. Um, templates, I think. Yeah, let's call it that. So we got the window pane template, and we'll have the side-by-side -side template. So no button, just a div. All right, so give a div class border to border black. Um, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. Let's just render the right template according to what layout blocks that the user has selected. So do the following. Just one more map. Def uh, templates map. I think I've got another one of these somewhere. Layout block map. Right. So do a similar thing. Template map. If it is window pane, gets the window pane templates. It is side by side. Give us the side by side template. All right. So in the template map, gets the template map at the index of item. Because item is a key. It's going to be either the key window pane or side by side. So evaluate that. Make it into our hiccup templates. And. Uh, maybe give it a little string, test string. Nah. Yeah, I don't, these don't, these don't take um, proper arguments, so if I pass something in there, then I won't actually see it. So let's see if that works. All right, so now we should see window pane and previously we only had this wrapper div but now we've got four divs right there all right so now if we got a side by side we should get the same thing okay so there's the button layer the template layer side by side same exact thing all right cool so now we can add divs of divs according to their respective buttons that's great Okay, so once we've done that, how do we render the images? 
I think we render the images in the templates themselves. So I was saying that these are going to be wrappers around images. So let's give them some images to wrap. Great. So now let's see what this looks like. Test, test image. <laughs> All right. A little bit of CSS work to do to keep that from uh, overflowing. Um, how about for all images, we do width. Sure, that's what I need. Is there some kind of override? With 100% height auto, yeah, maybe what I really need is like a overflow thing. I can do like window pane div overflow hidden. No. Hmm. That's uh, some kind of grid grid thing I'm going to have to work out. It would be easier if I just went with a square aspect image to start, and then I can figure out this. Um, like a good way to solve that CSS stuff later. Um, what should I look at? Um, old Sweatman, the image in my head I get is like a guy jogging. Remove this from my, uh... or just collect collapse. There we go. All right. It's a cool library, but I don't know if I need that showing up every time I open a new tab. Um, portrait of focus guy jogging, square aspect. Ooh, can I do this? Size, clip arts, settings, more. Nope. All right, just gotta look for the squarest one I can find. Square, square, square. Yeah, they're all kind of. Yeah, it's probably the closest I'm getting, right? Uh, view image. Yeah, such a long URL. Square, square, square. I just do this. Now you know what I can make it. I can make it square. Is that a uh, five, six? All right, five hundred. Sorry, lady, you're getting cropped out. Okay, that's square. Perfect. So how about we open this, copy that in. Uh, Backend, resources, public. Desktop, there we go. Copy that in, rename guy running. All right, guy running PNG. So test image is gonna be a 
public guy running that PNG. It's <laughs> a bunch of broken images. I don't know. Might be because my server is not actually running. That is. So I got the URL wrong. Okay, I'm running slash guy running. There we go. All right. Perfect. Okay, problem solved for the time being, but now... What do I need to do? I need to add an image at the appropriate time, at the appropriate place. So, yeah, just for the sake of making sure that this actually works, I think I need a second image. Um, Tyler. Teach Tyler, who's a who's a famous Tyler, Tyler Durden. All right. Uh, that one speaks to me. Let's go for it. Maybe this one. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that one. View image. Oh man. Picture was taken at a different time when screens were a bit smaller and lower resolution. All right, five thirty, five twenty-seven. There we go. Desktop. We'll rename this to Tyler. Test image two. Tyler.png. All right. And let's just make sure that that works. And then we can get to the work of actually uh, adding photos when we click. All right. Cool. OK. So now the question becomes, does this just have like a image tag in there all the time? Um, yeah, I guess so, right? Uh, really wouldn't hurt to have the tag in there with no source associated with it. And if I have the tag without the source in there anyway, then I can like hook that up to like something, something variable, like uh, Adam selected images, and then like, you know, that'd be like, you know, one, one or two or three or something, depending on, you know, what's been, what's been selected, so. That's the way I could do it. Um, uh, but how to tell this thing what the source is when I don't know where this template is going to go or when it's going to go there. <laughs> nice emojis. Okay. So, puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. Um, I think I can't really answer this question right now because uh, test image two. Can't answer this question right now because I don't have a place to store anything when I click on it, if that makes sense. So I think I need to click on the button. I need to add that information to like whatever kind of like 
data source I'm storing this information in. And at that point, I'll know what I need to add as a source attribute to these images. All right, I think that makes sense. So let's go to the window pane block. I'm gonna add a photo, row index zero, row index one. So, right, add photo. Swap the atom images, conjing with an image URL, test image one. Add photo, row index. I don't have the ability to like actually select a picture yet, but I'm gonna put this in for now. Uh, test image one. All right, so that'll eventually be like a like a URL that I get from somewhere. I don't know, um, but that's going to give me my image URL source. And how about we call this image URL just to stay consistent with our naming? All right. So now we add a photo, we add this in. So we've got an array of config objects with sources, rows, and columns. Now, I think what I need to do is when I render these window pane templates, I need to tell it what row it lives in, what column it lives in, and then based off of that, I can search through the atom images array and render the information in that map and tie it to my images. I think that makes sense. All right. So where do I call this function? I call this function here. Render template grids. Map indexed. Atom layout blocks. All right. So row index is going to be the index. This is just a positional argument. I mean, I'm probably going to be passing a bunch of stuff to this. So row index. Missing value for key index. And I think not. All right, render template grids, go back to our uh, keys. Let's remind ourselves how keys works. Uh, return to sequence of the map's keys. Right, so this is gonna be a function keys. Um, I think I need to go as far as uh, CD plotters app. Here, source app server. Yeah, here we go. Props, keys, row, row index. All right. So it's going to be image. The source is going to be. Um. It's 
going to be these atom images. Man, now I'm thinking I want this to be a map instead of a vector. So if I could, like, do this, I think that would make my job a lot easier. Um, you know, I think I've got my REPL situation all messed up. I should keep saying one sandbox. I know this REPL works right now with the config I've got, so let's go in here and have some experiments. File experiments dot closure. All right. So start the ripple. Load this into the namespace and we'll start. So uh, def. Uh, what am I calling this? Atom images. If it's a map that says like a row, row one, call, call one, uh, pictures.com slash image.jpg. Like if I did that, what I can then do is say, um, what I can then do is say like, image atom images I could say like I say I have a function Let's just minimize that for now since we're not gonna be doing any backend work today um, say if I had a function called window pane block, took a row index and returned some hiccup stuff. And set source image Source, and then we could say like um, atom images. We could say like keyword row index. Yeah, how would I do this? So I've got an idea that like I'm gonna pass like a row index, or it's like um, you know row. Def test row equals row one. And I'm gonna have like def test call equals call one. And I'm gonna have some function which is like def and join keywords. I'm just gonna take a row and a call. That's gonna say like keyword row. Yeah, I wonder if I could do this, like keyword. Keyword string row then a dash and call. I think that's what I want. Yeah, so if I call like join keywords with test row and test call, load them in. Gets row one call one. Yep, okay. So, yeah, that's how I tie my images to their data. That's how I'm going to do it. All right. So, yeah, how about we change that? 
function, that add photo function to account for that. All right, so add function, add photo, it's gonna be this, okay. So I think I need to do this in the small as well. Do it in the small. All right, def uh, Adam images. It's going to be a Adam. A man, a family rigged my birds to fly a path in 3.js. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I've read about 3.js. I've uh. I've used D3 a lot. I haven't used 3JS. I've, I've been I've been curious about that. And yeah, man, if you want to send us a link, uh, please please feel free. I'm also interested in uh, what you guys are working on. Adam images. Okay. So add photo is going to be a process of swapping that thing with what? Um, Can we like conj keywords? Key value, right. So if I conj, oh yeah. Oh, I could already, I could already do what I'm trying to do with, um, the strategy I'm going with. Yeah, but now I want like, what I want to have is like row one, call one. I want to have that be an object, which is like image URL, hi. I want it to be like that. So what do I do? It's not going to be conj. Celebor celebratory Reese's Cup. Yeah, good man, you earned it. Uh, maybe into key value. What if I did this? What if I didn't wrap it in? Um, back to the docs. about conjuring returns new collection with the X's added returns the item addition the addition may happen in different places depending on the concrete type oh okay if I pass it a vector conjuring maps only takes items as vectors of length exactly two yeah what if I do this Conj key and value onto that. Is that gonna be what I want? Hi, hello. Yeah, that gets me what I want. So now I'm gonna say like row one, call one. I'm gonna say source. Test, and I think I'm good. Yep, that's exactly what I want. All right. So the conj onto the objects, an array of keys and values. All right. Conj this image URL. Maybe keyword string. Row index. Row. Row, row your boat. Row index. Call. Call index. And just a dash to make it easier. String row one dash call one. That's going to be our key. This is going to be our value. Yes. And I guess I don't need any of that. 
Arguably don't need like his stuff to be in an object either, but um, I think I'll take it for now. Um, wrong number of args. Past two, expected three. Well, that's okay, we can fix that. Uh, window pane block, side by side block. And photo, let's make this test image. Two test image one, right. All right, so now we can start the process of clicking on the photos and actually rendering something. All right, so row index, yes, here we go. The image is going to have a source, that source is going to be and Adam images. Um, keyword string row index row row index dash call zero zero one two, three. All right. It's a little crazy for now, but we can change it later if we need to. I think that's what we want. Yeah. So nothing's rendering yet, but I think we're close. Adding pick. Maybe it did work, but we just haven't specified the image URLs correctly. Now, Let's get back to our window pane template and see what's going on. Source is going to be this. Keyword of string row, row index, call zero. We're getting it from Adam images. You can see alt new image yet. So at least we can know oh, we've got an image tag in there, no image yet. All right, so what have we done here? 1121, I bet we can finish this. So I drink from my empty water glass. All right, oh, no image yet. Um, I just have an event on it. Bubbling down to, um, you know, maybe if we just like load this thing up with, um, Make a default value that'll help. Row one call. Row zero call one. It's gonna be test image one. This needs to go up here. Yeah, so can we like render out of this thing successfully yet? Ah, yes, yes, we can render, we can render using, um, using our strategy. So if we say row zero, row zero, call zero, test image two. 
think we can probably also render that. Indeed we can. So the problem lies in the click event, I believe. All right, turn that back into an empty, empty map for now. And let's head back to our ad photo. Ah, conj conj. <laughs> nope. Can't conj conj, you can only conj. Image URL. Right, another thing we're doing is we're passing test image one as a string, but it should really be a variable that we're passing. The value of what is in that variable and not the string test image itself. So there's another thing to do. And then I think I need to actually get the uh, this key. Right, so keyword at amateur images. So now I think I need to make these a get in. Get in at Adam images. image URL. Okay. First things first, you need to access the right object and then you need to get the right property on the right object. All right, my friends, I think we're onto something here. these. I think I'd also like to get a lot better at is um, uh, navigating, um, navigating code and like code changes and text changes using um, Calva. So I think I've still got a very kind of a unlispy approach for doing that. Um, okay, let's read carefully. Image, the source is going to be that. Payout is going to be that. Yep, so this is correct. So what are the errors I'm getting here? This thing. That one's correct. Right, missing, missing paren. Cool, man, I think, uh, I think we're close, if not there already. Nope, not there already, but definitely close. Button layer, template layer. So if I click on this, what do we get? Get no source. Yeah, I definitely need to uh, add photo. We're logging, adding pick. Oop, no item one and vector length of one. Some problems here too, don't we? 
send down to that thing this thing. Okay, I think, uh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, we got it, guys. Boink. All right. Can we do it for the window pane already? Not quite. Let's do it for the window pane, too. Ah, that's really cool. Window pane block, side by side block. All right. <laughs> hey, thank you, man. You're uh, you're good with the uh, you good with the emojis at a celebratory moment. Um, boy, refactored code is in my future. But for now, let's just celebrate what we got done, man. We added an image programmatically to a React component. So the source is going to be get in anim images row row index. This needs a row index and the image URL. Cool. Uh, part of the front end gig. Yep, this definitely is. Quite enjoy front end, honestly. I think people I think really, really don't like working with the browser, but um, that's where all the cool stuff happens. And new lab block, oh dear. Still super crashy, I don't even care. Oh my God. Let's select this first, render it. Still can and a pick. So I think my side by side button, window pane block, side by side block, row index, row call index one zero. Um, do I have this right? On click, add photo. Gonna be row index one, column zero, test image. It's pretty much what we're doing here. And we're rendering photos in the same way down here. So what's the difference? Why does that work? But this doesn't. Um, Button layer, template layer, what's inside of you? Image with no source. So I guess. What I'm doing in the source must not be. Call zero, call one. Well, there's something to fix. Call zero, call one needs to have the right numbers. Um, String pretty print. Just want to see what the value of the things I'm adding in are. Closure dot pretty print. PP slash P print. All right. So let's click on this button and see what we get. 
Doink. Or zero, call three. Or zero, call. Oh, hello. Row one, call zero. Row one, call zero. So if we refresh, we add that layout block. Yes, that's a straight. Image URL, localhost 3000 guy running. Row one, call zero. So, so my side by side render is not. Get in Adam images, keyword string, window pane template. Ah, it's because I was not passing or accessing the prop correctly. So now it'll work. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Da, da, doink, 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 doink. Awesome. Doink. Click, 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 click. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, 1133. Wow. Well, we got our layout problem solved. We can click buttons. We can add pictures. So that's great progress. Um, I wonder if I could go so far as selecting the picture I want to render. Or I wonder if I should stop there and just work on some like cleanup stuff. Uh, yeah, much as I'd like to continue working on this, I think some cleanup stuff is going to be a better thing to focus on in our last half hour. So how about we do that until 12 o'clock EST. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff I could do. Uh, first obvious thing would be to start breaking things out into modules. So. Yeah, how about we do that? Big wheel main, launch directory, source. All right. Uh, yeah, how about we pick story, change our namespaces up, pick story.core, rename this, pick story. All right. I totally destroy my web page. I did. But maybe if I restart the REPL. Spaces and other related things. It's something I have a lot of trouble with for some reason. Pick story core. It was called February, now it's called Pick Story. Where else? Count the outputs. Just get rid of that. CLJ condo. Dot lisp. Resources, fonts, image. Targets, dev main, and maybe if I just get rid of this. Force it to make a new one. Build dev repl. Steps Eden, run the dev. Charge AJE, why do you have to restart the REPL? Um, I don't know if I had to restart the REPL necessarily. Um, and I'm a little shaky on like when I actually need to do that and when I don't need to do that. But as part of our cleanup activities, which we're engaging in, um, like I chose a name for the startup so i was just calling this like february so i changed like this folder from like february to pick story and then this used to be like february.core so i named it pickstory.core so i thought i might need to um 
rename or uh, restart the REPL in order to um, account for all those like changes. But it didn't seem to do it. So I think I need to figure out where I went wrong here. All right. Pick story dot index page. <clears throat> oh, morning, Kevin. Usually not, but tend, but depends on using the Kava integration to the REPL. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff that's like kind of secondary to the code itself, which influences all this. So yeah, maybe this did it. Nope. Seeden dev. Kava is not as good as Cider and Cursive. Cider and Cursive don't require repro restarts. Yeah, you know, I was um, I was looking into Cursive. Oh wait, hold on. I got a helpful error message just there. Uh, February dot index. Jeez, I was like all kinds of. This even a file I care about, right? Uh, didn't I change that Good story? Everyone I know who have gone the IntelliJ cursive route have become fans. Yeah, yeah, and I've definitely heard good stuff about cursive. I tried using it um, on Friday, but it was like crazy slow, um, like really, really laggy. Um, cursive. Laggy on Mac. Mac OS lag when typing. Yeah, I think I was the uh, unlucky fellow who um, got this, like, you know, February 2020, like, cursive is, like, super slow. Like, what do I do? You know, there's a bunch of people who have, like, listed comments about that, but um, seemingly no fixes. Yeah, someone at the end had something to say. Oh, I have awful news for everyone affected by this issue. Clean slates. Yeah, so maybe I just need to like delete and reinstall it. But anyway, I, I might move to IntelliJ and Cursive because it seems um yeah, just working in in a like you know closure specific tool like that is probably gonna behoove me ultimately Loading failed oh, man I had such a good morning and now I'm crash landing into um, a bunch of tool problems right at the end of the stream eh let's see I know about the RAM requirements VS code is lean <laughs> just saying something for an electron app isn't it Emacs is also a hefty chunker when it comes to my RAM yeah yeah I read a lot of cool stuff about Emacs too so it's definitely a enthusiastic Vim user before um, Par Reddit, Reddit rendered most of the skills like pretty much pointless. Um, yeah, I think I can get a lot of the stuff I really liked about Vim in Emacs and then also get that like um, kind of like integrated environment thing that Emacs has going on in terms of like, you know, there's a web browser in Emacs, there's a, you know, there's a REPL in Emacs, like you never have to leave that program if um, if you don't want to. So that, that idea really appeals to me as well. So I may take the plunge eventually, but first I need to click my buttons a little bit because I can't believe I got that done. All right, cool. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Right, so there's a little bit of cleanup. Um, now that I got my dumb, dumb problems figured out, let's move on to the other stuff I was trying to do. Delete. Let's see, love the progress, looking great. Ah, thank you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like basically like the core idea of the app right here. So you've got like. Um, you know, these layout grids, you've got buttons for, like, selecting the pictures. So, like, the piece I'm missing is, um, like, choosing the picture. Like, I've got a 
hard-coded set of photos right now, but yeah, we've got the upload piece done so I can upload, and then all I need to do is like have some kind of utility for choosing among the photos that you've uploaded, and then that button call becomes something that's like hard-coded to some random image to, um, you know, something that you, you yourself selected, so that's, that's really good. Right, in the last 20 minutes I have with you guys, how about we move some stuff around? Um, so I think what I want is like, uh, layouts blocks dot cljs. So let's get that to start. And I've been doing a lot of hard coding of these things. And they're all like very similar. But like sometimes a div is a button, sometimes a button is a div, sometimes it has a wrapper, sometimes it doesn't. So I feel like I could at the very least move these into a new file and then as a second step start to kind of generalize something into uh, you know code that's not going to require me to you know have like 60 lines of like basically the exact same thing over and over again all right so that's over there namespace layout blocks Next page. Oh, do I dare start to replace these? I think I must. All right, let's start with the selectors. Window pane selectors have an on-click method, so I guess that needs to be a prop now. As props keys. On click. All right. And then button on click is not going to be that, but it's going to be on click. On click. All right. Just one thing at a time. So perhaps keys on click. And now I think. And comment those out. Acquire these from my brand new lame space. Um, right, so that's going to be um, uh, pick story dot soiter story dot layout blocks. And prefer these things. All right, let's see if I completely broke it. Could not find namespace, I think I did. Can access property index page, pick story index page is undefined. Layout blockus, there's a good one. Still broken, eh? Um, Blocks, layout blocks. Uh, you know, maybe um, maybe this is doing something crazy right now. No such namespace. I think is my error. Could not locate pick story slash layout blocks dot cljs. Right space pick story dot layout blocks. I think that was the missing piece, wasn't it? Yes, it was. All right, cool. So there's our new reusable components, but we did not pass any props to them. So now, fourth cup of coffee. Hey man, I'm, uh, I'm just about to get my second once I sign off here. Pane selector. Right, so back here. Window 
pane selector. Where is I using this? All right, so now we need an on click prop, which corresponds to energies. Oh, shouldn't have under template grids, template map. Oh no, <laughs> what was the function? Add photo, add layout block. Yeah, it was add layout block, right? No, select layout block. Yeah, select layout block, that was it. Unclick is going to be that function. Unclick is going to be that function. There we go. Okay. Now nah, that's fixed. Still looks super janky, but it's working. Okay, so that's a component in a different module now. All right. So we need some new props, right? We need uh, image map. We need a row index. Image URL. And that's all we need. Okay. So image map. This also needs an image map. That goes here. Okay. Side by side template window pane templates. So let's go back to where they're being used. Side by side templates. All right. This out for now. Template map, window pane templates, row index, row index, and the image map is going to be Adam images. I think that's all we need, right? prefer these ones as well. All right, I think that must be working. Cool, all right. So now we can get those out of the way. And we can get those out of the way. And we had one more set over here, I believe. Uh, the blocks. What's this do? These are the components which actually add the photos. So side block, side block, and window pane block. Uh, this also needs an unclick. Unclick in the row index. to be wrapped, a argument effector. All right, um, click, test image one, test image two. So that's eventually going to be Something we actually pass to a function, but for now let's just move those over there so we have access to our test images. And let's go side block. We're using those in our layout block map. Okay, so our layout block map needs to now pass the following. Row index is going to be the index, and um, click will be add photo. Right, 
I think that's it. Window pane block, side by side block. Oh, but we also need to import them. And if we go back and it works, which I don't think it did, or did it? Close enough for rock and roll, I'd say. All right, cool. So now we have a much cleaner index page. Uh, we got seven minutes. What can we do in seven minutes? Um, maybe start to take a look at what these layout blocks are. Oh boy. I think I'd like to get to a place at some point where I can have like this because this is like basically what a layout block is right it's like a wrapper class with either side by side or window pane or whatever other um, uh, like image template blocks I'm going to create um, and that's gonna have like divs on the inside which correspond to the areas of the grids themselves. And then everything else is just kind of a variation on that, but um, a little bit different. Like, uh, you know, the selector is one thing. That's the that's the button you use to like actually add a template to the page. And then we've got side-by-side -side template, which is like the, the thing we're rendering like underneath the buttons themselves. So those are like, oh, the divs with the um, images themselves in them. So the only way that's different from like the selector, for instance, is like instead of a instead of an image we're rendering a button. So yeah, it's all like variations on a theme, but you know, it's all the same code like over and over again. So I wonder if I could like Oh, come up with a way to um kinda do this more more smartly but not like too smart so you can definitely take this like way too far in the wrong direction where um you know what you're really doing is just like making a bunch of complicated functions um that are gonna be like hard to work with and hard to debug and hard to understand so it's like a side of this argument where like doing this the dumb way for as long as possible is you know a better approach because at least that's like you know easier to work with up until a certain point but there's also an argument where, like, you know, if you keep doing it the dumb way, like, for long enough, you get to this point where, you know, you've got, like, a thousand lines of code, and all of a sudden making, like, a small change is this, like, huge effort. So, where to draw that line has been a persistent mystery for me, as I'm sure it is for many people in the programming field. And I don't know if I've crossed that threshold yet. And if I don't know whether or not I've crossed the threshold, it probably means that I haven't. But I think I could pick better names for these. Or could I? Side-by-side -side templates, window pane block. Yeah. I think the selector is okay. So you're like selecting which template to add, but I think template and block don't have great names. So side by side. Oh, what is this thing really? It's like a it's like an image adder. It's like a template image adder. Uh template image adder UI image 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 add UI add image UI. Image 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 selector. Yeah, side by side image selector. Side by side, templates, template selector. Side by side, template selector, window pane, template selector, window pane, image selector, side by side, image selector, uh, window pane, image render, something like that. 
Yeah, I think it was better. Boy, <laughs> the names were so bad. I've got no idea what um what I need to change now. I think that. Image renderer, window pane, template selector, side by side, image selector. All right. Image render, I think. Side by side, templates, template selector. Right, just uh, one more place, I think. Window pane, image selector. Pretty sure it's it. If it all works, I'm happy. Great. All right, cool. Well, eleven fifty-nine. That's uh, that's a nice round number. So I think I'll stop the stream for there. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me, everyone. Sorry I was a bit late today. Uh, started around like 10 o'clock instead of 9.30. I uh, didn't get the warm-up in, but um, yeah, real jazz to um, be able to click these buttons and actually add an image. So it doesn't look like much now, but the core functionality of like what we're trying to do is, um, yeah, more or, less, uh, more or less already here. So yeah, it's just a matter of refinement and... Uh, you know, changed all the static code into dynamic code, but um, yeah, we're uh, we're getting along at a good clip. So yeah, feeling good about this week. Um, anyway, thank you for joining, uh, Kevin. I'm just gonna have to show up to your stream one of these afternoons since you've been so kind to show up in my stream every morning. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll stop by this afternoon, and say hello. But um, yeah, otherwise, if I don't see you, um, have a nice afternoon, and uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. So have a nice day, everybody.